Video 57 of the master course Quantum Chemistry of Molecular Electromagnetic Properties. The topic of this lecture is Vibration Contribution to Molecular Properties. The first part, some overstates treatment. In the previous chapters, chapter 4 to 7, we have derived a lot of expressions for molecular properties. But in all these expressions, we assumed that the nuclei are fixed. So we made the Bonhoeffner approximation and only considered the solution to the electronic equation. But that's not a realistic picture because uh, even at zero Kelvin, molecules, the, atom, the nuclear, the atoms in molecules vibrate. And we have not included this effect. Furthermore, if we want to calculate properties at other temperatures, room temperature, then we have to include temperature effects and the temperature effects actually come about because of the vibrations. Because at higher temperature, it's not only the uh, vibration ground state occupied, but maybe some higher vibration states are also occupied. And finally, if we are interested in isotope shifts of uh, different molecular properties or properties for molecules with different isotopes, the changes in molecular properties due to different isotopes are also again due to uh, the nuclear motion corrections. And all these we cannot do if we just calculate the molecular property at the equilibrium geometry. So the purpose of this chapter is to derive equations which allow us to correct for this. And we will uh, illustrate it with the static polarizability as an example, because uh, um, there we only have one term to look at. So what we have to do is now we have to go back to the Hamiltonian, which also includes the kinetic energy operators for the nuclei. And we want to work now with, with wave functions, which are eigenfunction to this Hamiltonian, the Hamiltonian, which also includes the kinetic energy operator for nuclei. And these are called vibronic wave functions. Here, so they depend on the electronic coordinates and on the nuclear coordinates. Um, and I have indicated here the wave function by two um, collective quantum numbers, K for the electronic part and V for the vibrational part. And we have the energies, which are also vibronic energies, meaning there's a contribution from the electronic part K and from the vibrational part V. Uh, and what we're going to do now is we're going to use this vibronic wave functions as the unperturbed wave functions in all the expression for the molecular properties instead of the purely electronic wave function as we have done in chapters four to seven. However, we are not going, we don't want to go away from the bonn oppmann approximation. So we'll still use the bonn oppmann approximation, which means eventually we will write the vibronic wave functions as a simple product of an electronic wave function and a nuclear wave function. But we have two options now here and I have to choose between them. And that is with respect to when are we going to make the bonn oppmann approximation, which, which means when are we going to write the vibronic wave function as a simple product. Are we going to do that before or after we have applied the external uh, perturbation? And that is uh, going to be the topic of this lecture and of the next lecture. So in this lecture, which also has the title Sum of States Treatment, we will apply the effect of the perturbation simultaneously to the electronic and the vibration part of the wave function. So we'll actually apply it to the vibronic wave function, which means we're going to apply the perturbation first, and then later on, we are going to make uh, the bonn oppmann approximation, which means uh, we're going to look at the vibronic wave function, which depends on uh, external perturbation here in our case, because we're going to look at the polarizability. It's an external static, homogeneous static electric field. And like we have done in, in chapter three of perturbation theory, we will expand this uh, perturbed wave function in a perturbation series. And I stop here after the first term. So we have the unperturbed vibronic wave function and we have a first order correction. And the first order correction, of course, will look like as we had it in the uh, purely electronic case, we expand the first order correction to the vibronic wave function just in the complete set of unperturbed vibronic wave functions. Now, um, since they are vibronic wave functions, um, the complete set includes then all electronic states, all excited electronic states, and all the vibrational states 
in these excited uh, electronic states. So, so the, the set of function is, is much larger and than in the case of the electronic one, because we also have all the vibrational wave functions for each of these electron states. Um, the energies here in the denominator are also vibronic energy, so it's not only the electronic, it's not just the electronic energy in the equilibrium geometry, but it's actually the energy in a vibrational state in different electronic states. And the operator now, the perturbation operator, well, it's the same uh, first order perturbation operator, which we always have when we have the interaction with the electric field, with the static uh, and uniform electric field, except now, now, of course, we have to make sure, of course, that we include the nuclear contribution with the nuclear operator also here. Now, with this uh, first order wave function, we can then use um, the expressions for the polarizability, which uh, based on the first order wave function, and we get this expression here, which looks very much like the expression we had in uh, chapter four. Um, the difference is that uh, we have now the nuclear dipole moment operators also in here, and now they do not vanish, at least not yet. And um, these are our uh, vibronic wave functions, and we have vibronic energy. So this is, as I said before, not the energy in the equilibrium structure, but it's the energy of a vibrational state in the corresponding um, electronic states. In principle, we could be satisfied with that. Uh, one would have to then, in order to evaluate uh, this one here, one would have to calculate all these energies and all these wave functions and evaluate transition moments. But normally one splits um, the summation up in two parts. The first part, where we only sum over the vibrational states of the electronic ground state. So we have the same electronic state here. So it's zero and also zero here. It's all the way zero, so it's all the electronic ground state. But the difference is here, uh, uh, V is the vibration state we want to look at, which probably often is the ground state, but still the vibration state we want to look at. And here we have uh, um, all the other vibration state of this electronic ground state. This uh, contribution is called the pure vibrational contribution to the polarizability. In the second contribution, then, we have all the other electronic states. So it's all excited electronic states and then all vibrational levels in these excited electronic states. And that is called the electronic vibrational polarizability, um, which means that this is, these excited energies are now energies of the different vibrational levels of the in the excited electronic states. And these are the corresponding wave functions. So now we can do uh, the Bonhoeffer approximation, which means we write all these unperturbed vibronic wave functions now. We write them as a product of an unperturbed electronic wave function and an unperturbed vibrational wave function. If we do this, and if we insert that now in both expressions, let's look first again. Uh, now let's look first here at the electronic vibrational one. Um, what we can see now is that uh, we can sort of regroup them in a way, and I chose to write uh, um, the inner integral to be over the electronic here. And in the same way also for the vibrational polarizability, where here again the inner integral is over the electronic wave functions. Now, these are the ground, this is the ground set electronic wave function, and here we have the electronic and the nuclear contribution to the electric dipole moment operator. So this is sort of the total dipole moment operator. And of course, the expectation value of the dipole moment operator in the electronic ground state, this is just the dipole moment of the molecule in the electronic ground state. Which means that uh, the vibrational polarizability actually, we have here is uh, a sum over all the vibrational states in the electronic ground state. And we have here transition moments with two different vibrational wave functions. And the transition moments where, where the operator is actually the electric dipole moment of the molecule, but the electric dipole moment, of course, calculated uh, at uh, different internuclear distances or different geometries, because uh, um, the, the variables here uh, for this integral, that's an integral over a nuclear wave function. So the variables, of course, are the nuclear positions. And which means in order to calculate this variable, I need to know the electric dipole moment for all the different nuclear positions. Now, um, 
And that's for our electric properties, like polarizability. The question is, what would, how would it be if we would look at evaporation correction to, for example, the magnetizability, magnetic property, magnet and the magnetizability of closed shell molecule? Well, here would, of course, um, the corresponding vibrational, purely vibrational contribution would then have here the magnetic moment of the molecule. But since the magnetic moment for a closed shell molecule is zero, the magnetizability of a closed shell molecule has not this pure vibrational contribution to it. So let's go back to the vibrational contribution to the polarizability. Here we have it. So in order to calculate that, one needs uh, the energies of all the vibration states in the ground state potential. And one needs the corresponding uh, wave functions because one has to calculate these uh, vibration dipole transition moments. And as I said, so in order to do that, one needs to calculate the potential energy surface in order to get solve the vibrational problem and get all the energies of the vibration states in the electronic ground state and the wave function. And one needs to, uh, the electric dipole moment surface in order to be able to evaluate these integrals here. Now let's go to the electronic vibration polarizability. Um, here one needs, unfortunately, all the excited electronic states with their wave function because we need to calculate all the normal uh, transition moments. And we need to evaluate the transition moments then again um, for all possible nuclear uh, positions because we still have here uh, vibrational wave functions. So we need, uh, in order to evaluate this integral, we need to know the transition moment um, surface, uh, to say this. And um, in addition to the electronic states uh, here, which we need here, we of course need the vibrational wave functions in the excited electronic state. So this is the vibrational wave function in the electronic ground state, whereas these vibrational wave functions are in the excited electronic states. And that makes it actually quite difficult to calculate this because one has to calculate not only uh, the, the electronic wave function for the excited states, but one needs to solve the vibration problem for all the excited electronic states. So let's see at whether we can make some of the denominator down here, the dependence on the vibrational, the excited vibration states in the excited electronic states disappear. Um, and that means that the summation of the prime, I can just move up, up here in front of uh, um, here, the vibration wave function approximations to this. Well, one, can, one approximation one can make is to say that um, compared to the energy difference between the ground electronic state and the excited electronic states, the energy difference between then the vibration ground state of the excited electronic state and the excited vibrational state in the excited electronic state is relatively small. So we can ignore the the vibrational states in the excited state, at least energy-wise, we can ignore them and approximate this energy difference just by the energy difference between the vibration ground state in the excited electronic states. That has then the consequences that uh, in, and then um, I can use that uh, a complete set of wave functions uh, for a complete set of wave function. Um, one has this relation that uh, written in this way, uh, that's equal to one, that's sort of called the resolution of one. And we can use make use of that, which means we get a one instead of, so the vibration wave function here between our electronic transition uh, moments disappear if we make this approximation here. And then we get a simplified expression for the electronic vibration polarizability, where, what do we need to know? Well, we need to know still the electronic wave function, the excited electronic wave functions. And uh, we need to know the energy of the vibration ground state in each of the excited electronic uh, states. That's already much better than having to get all the vibration states. So now we only need the ground state. And then of course we need our uh, the ground state, the vibration ground state in the electronic ground state, but that we need anyway in all the cases here.